example, my background is in physics. So like physics is like true love and I love it a lot. And with respect to physics, probably I shouldn't say this in front of, you know, like Kaggle and like computer science community. I mean, there is like physics and there is like machine learning. I mean, so basically going from physics to machine learning was like kind of like down. And I miss physics a lot. But at the same time, I didn't want to stay a life science, but I didn't want to stay in academia. And about like four months before the graduation, I needed to decide where to go. And I was starting like one hour drive from Silicon Valley, and Silicon Valley is the place to be for technical person. So I mean, it looked very tempting, but I had no clue about machine learning, data science, or any other like fancy buzzwords. So I started like taking classes on Coursera about like data science. I believe it was like nano degree from John Hopkins. In one of the classes, people like, you know, lecturers mentioned Kaggle as a place to practice your skills. I mean, to compete and great community and basically like amazing place to learn. So I tried my first couple competitions were epic fails, but then one led to another and, you know, I got addicted. Kaggle is a very addictive place, all this gamification and other stuff. And I was also learning a lot and it was a big thing that helped me to get my first job and actually later on, when I was like, you know, moving like in my career for better and better positions, every time it wasn't just what I learned in my previous position, maybe not just in academia, but combination of like industry experience, academic, and especially what I learned from Kaggle in competitions from the community, forum, kernels, and etc. So Kaggle was like a really big thing like for moving this. Right now I work in a company named Lyft in its division that develops like self-driving cars. As usual, I kind of talk like in details what I'm doing there, but let's say it's like this. I'm applying computer vision, traditional deep learning part of computer vision, and deep learning to other types of the data there on like literally everyday basis. And in the yesterday talks, I try to emphasize, I'm not sure if it worked well, that I mean, Kaggle is like big helper for me. And I, even now I get enormous amount of knowledge from there, maybe even more than from the scientific literature. So yeah. I don't really remember, like first competition was probably predicting like drivers or something like this. It was hard one. So yeah, second one was probably restaurant revenue prediction. It was especially like, important because I mean, train data set has only 153 rows and I even now remember this number. Test set was 10,000 and I overfitted like crazy and basically my expectations were very high about my standing and then reality showed its teeth and after this I'm very careful with cross-validation and after this like you know I don't really move across leaderboard that much. It was basically a good like you know turning point for me in terms of machine learning. My favorite probably would be like DSTL satellite imagery challenge. It was like, so I believe Kaggle was hosting like tabular data competitions for a while and somewhere two years ago, they moved like into like more deep learning computer vision space. Partially I believe because industry overall and deep learning moved away from academic and like, you know, excitement about we beat human performance to something that brings value to the company and like, you know, maps data into money. And so companies started like exploring what they can do with computer vision and it was this let's say like image challenge. I remember this because I wrote like a pipeline, hackish and trend that was training model and to do like stuff within probably like two evenings. And then for the next two months, I wasn't able to do a submission. There were some issues in terms of metric, in terms of size of the something, and my knowledge of the traditional computer vision at the time wasn't good enough to like, you know, work with the submission file. Also, it was first competition at Kaggle in which I got money. It was unexpected and kind of moved my mindset from something, okay, only like, you know, some fancy grandmaster or someone at the top can like make money and they're like not like, they work in a different universe and like, I mean, have no clue how to get there to something, guys, it's totally doable. And me and my like collaborator, we split 20,000 in prizes and I like the cash. It's not too much. I mean, with respect to Silicon Valley, but I mean, it was real cash and it was exciting. Also, it was probably the first competition just before this challenge, I joined ODS.ai, like community, which is really strong and like, you know, 20 out of like hun top 100 Kaggle people there in ODS.ai. And in this challenge and this like this satellite imagery, they were competing against me, I'm against them. We shared like knowledge, I mean like, you know, writing memes around about each other. It was entertaining and basically it was a lot of fun. So. 
it's, it wasn't just about like learning, not just about like computer vision. Also, I mean, with like most of these people later on, with some of them we wrote some papers and like others, we just like still friends. And one of them I just visited during my trip to Moscow. So basically, yeah, the ST Light Saturday Imaging Challenge was like, you know, one of the turning steps in my like Kaggle adventure and career in computer vision in general. What libraries would I consider the most important for me right now? I focus mostly on deep learning computer vision, so I would say, of course, PyTorch is like choice to go. I mean, probably guys like develop TensorFlow may get a bit upset, but still, I mean, I use TensorFlow a lot and it's a great library, but PyTorch for my task is far more superior. Second library probably, I mean, computer vision is not just deep learning. There's an enormous amount of like traditional computer vision, like tricks, tips, algorithms that's undervalued, I believe, by many, you know, deep learning practitioners. And so OpenCV is my second choice. It's just, I use it a lot and this is just great. And third one, when you work with images, it's important to do image augmentations and transformations to the imagery data. And here I would like, you know, to say that Albumentations library that performed that fast, like flexible and something and was used to win number of, you know, Kaggle competitions in the past few months is good. Disclaimer, I'm one of the authors of the library. <laughs> but yeah, these three libraries are probably my choice. I mean, let's say most important reason when, you know, when I write in TensorFlow, I want to kill someone after like a few hours. When I write in PyTorch, I enjoy it. Reminds me sometime, maybe like when I was doing research in physics, it's like intuitive, nice, clean interface, debugging significantly easier, parallelization is amazing. I mean, maybe TensorFlow right now is kind of similar, I didn't touch it for the last like year, but I mean, PyTorch is definitely like, much more enjoyable and allows me to achieve results that I require. At, like, I would not talk about work, but like say in competitions and side projects, significantly faster, more enjoyable, and like probably maybe even accuracy of the models is higher. My probably worst and probably the best, as I mentioned, I believe it was like rest on revenue prediction when I felt good, I have like hyped, I was climbing like, like, you know, across public leaderboard like higher and it was like good feature engineering, good algorithms, everything makes sense. I was doing all things right and then competition was over and I dropped 600 places. It's not enough to do like everything right, there should be a bit of luck and also you should be careful with what and how like you do and think not about like your score which is also kind of important, but about general visibility and this type of the stuff. So after this, I became much more careful and yeah, like, I mean, it was painful because you have expectations, then you click, competition is over next second, and then you just like feel a bit shock, some frustration, yeah. So I mean, so yeah, in this sense, yeah, it was like, you know, worst and great moment, yeah, for sure. People like to blame Kaggle for having like leaks in the data, and Kaggle has leaks in the data. I mean, no, like you know, nearly every competition, especially if you look carefully, and Kaggle community is pretty good in like finding and exploiting this. At the same time, if I mean I will need to host any, I believe, machine learning competitions on any type of the data, I don't care. Like you know, I can spend one year exploring and trying to figure out that there is no leaks. There will be leaks, and community will find this. This morning, I've seen tech report about like so that like some researchers they found that like CFR 10 and CFR 100 data sets that like research community was like you know using to develop algorithms and compare as a benchmark apparently 3% of the training tests like set in CFR 10 are exactly the same and in CFR yeah in CFR 100 like I mean about 10% like and they were using this data set for now 10, 20, well, I don't know, like how many years, and like, you know, research, PhDs, etc. In Kaggle, I believe if they were hosting this competition at Kaggle, within top, within just first 20 minutes, someone would form this leak and post this at the forum. I mean, there is a lot of leaks, a lot of frustrations, but there is no way to avoid it. Yeah, and community is good, I mean, they have like interest in terms of finding leakage, because I mean, leaderboard gamification, I mean, it feels good. Initially in my career, I was spending a lot on the table or data, and there was like a lot of feature engineering and a lot of you know like dimensionality reduction, you know cross validation, proper schema, things like this. Uh, I didn't do any like table or data competitions in the last year and a half. I moved to the computer vision, deep learning, and situation changed because like one of the luxury that computer vision like folks have, you can understand like you just basically can visualize your predictions and get some interpretation on like where your networks is looking, what are corner cases, and, and they not just some numbers, they make sense to you intuitively. And so typically, I mean, just looking at the data, 
probably not in the sense like you know what types of distributions do we have but mostly about like when my like where do my networks look what are the corner cases what type of augmentations should i add what like you know type of architectural changes should i do based on this feedback so it's more about looking with my eyes on what do we have and like thinking how can we improve on this and of course like you know because deep learning computer vision very actively developing fields reading a lot of literature and so yeah coding part is a bit less than you know actual thinking and exploring Probably paper was longer than this, but I mean, what I like in terms of like new advancements in terms of technology, same is networks. I like, really like how in this like humbug whale predictions, folks like use it to do classification with extreme rare training class, when you have one example per class for a few thousand classes. And also I looked like, and I looked at the algorithms, implementations and papers about how people use it for tracking and for other stuff. So basically kind of like fails in this domain of like one-shot learning and like using small amount of data. This part is really exciting because I mean, it's applicable and there's, I, my intuition tells me huge field for exploration and building on top of this for like whole set of different tasks. So same is networks and their modifications and applications. Probably the most enjoyable, I mean, Kaggle Day is like, like well organized and like cool community in general. But yesterday I gave a talk to the audience and I was a bit frustrated because I mean, there were some issues. I wasn't able to buy like a ticket to Burning Man, so a bit like upset. And like came to the stage and I mean, sure, I need to give to the audience Kaggle, I mean, a different like, well, and then, you know, I said a few sentences, I looked in the eyes of the audience, I feel this connection, this flow, and, you know, I relaxed, and I hope, like, people enjoy my presentation, enjoyed my presentation, but, I mean, I like this energy, this flow, and I feel that I belong here. It's, like, not just, you know, some random people that came to hear this because, you know, they're not even related, but you feel like a family, some connection to the audience. I really like this feeling. I mean, sadly, my talk was only 45 minutes, but still, it was, like, probably best 45 minutes of the Kaido days.